So I've always been like an Andrew Tate fan, and I've heard of him. He's been talking about the carnivore diet a long time ago. I heard him talk about the carnivore diet. I considered it, but I was like, I can't really do this. It's not sustainable, and I'm trying to like bulk. I can't even get enough calories just eating normally. But recently, I saw a Hamza video, and it was titled, The One Change That I Would Make like in his 20s or something maybe i can pull up the video i don't remember the title and he would say it was like the one change that i would make and that's what like kind of broke the ice i'm like so andrew tate very successful self-improvement guy in our field and then the other guy the second most successful guy basically uh hamza he also is on the carnivore night and that's what like kind of broke the ice i'm like both of the guys are on it obviously it's proven if these hyper successful guys are using the carnivore diet, it must be breaking it, cutting edge, not breaking edge. Anyways, that's what got me into the carnivore diet. I saw Hamza's video and he just was talking. He was yapping a ton and he actually put up some pretty good points like carbs, slow your brain down. And you can apparently unlock like 50% of your brain power, increase your brain power accordingly by like 50% just switching your diet to meat so the main point of the carnivore diet is for the brain benefit and it goes off the idea that carbs they give you brain fog carbs they kind of like mess up your brain you ever get like maybe you're in a classroom and you just can't focus you can't concentrate that's just all carbs apparently anyways carbs slow your brain down they give you brain fog blah 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 let's go into some other points real quick now you might be like so vegans got it wrong we need meats and to that i say kind of yeah vegans it's just basic human biology at this point we we are human we are predators we have eyeballs on the front of our eyes we're not gazelle we don't have side eyeballs we're front eyeballed species we so we can hunt and chase down prey and we are meat eaters it's just it's just biology, like I said. It's For an example, it's like trying to give a tiger, trying to feed a tiger veggies. I actually looked this up, by the way. <laughs> in, in making this video, I looked that up. And if you try to give a tiger vegetables, it's going to make them sick and kill them. But they have negative effects, vegans. You'll see they have, like, really stiff hair. I'm not saying anybody's wrong, just pointing to the facts here. I'm not trying to anger anybody. Meat eaters are stronger than vegans. There's actually instances in history, I believe, when other cultures try to switch other cultures to a more vegan diet in order to kind of weaken them if you think about it is this what's going on in like our culture we're switching away from like eating meat to going towards more vegetable grain sort of diets you know we, we used to be hunter gatherers we used to eat meat and then it was just recently just recently that we switched over to a farming industrious civilization we always used to be hunter gatherers for like nine ninety thousand years or something and just recently in the ten thousand we switched to farming and agriculture and a bunch of like diseases popped up it makes you think like is cancer and all these diseases like diabetes is this natural like animals like sharks and other species they don't get sicknesses why do we get sick it's because we put weird cancer food in our diets we eat like takis and cheetos and red 40 and grains and puffed wheat and we think that's normal when it's not <laughs> it's not natural it's like you're poisoning yourself you're literally poisoning yourself with the food we eat like i said trying to feed a tiger veggies it's gonna kill them it's not it's gonna make them sick their bodies can't handle that their bodies aren't designed to gain nutrients from that kind of food and filter out the toxins like how we can from meat like hypothetically let's say you were given 30 days to, and you had to fight against this guy to the death. You would much rather him be a meat eater. You would much rather him be a vegetarian diet than a meat eater. Like, this guy eats veggies for a month, and this guy eats meat. This guy's probably gonna win. It's just, that's what I'm trying to get at here. Enough with that ranting. Let me just talk about the carnivore diet and its problems associated with the carnivore diet. The main problem you're gonna run into with the carnivore diet, and I say the main problem, is that it's super expensive. You know, if you're like me, you think carnivore diet, you think Andrew Tate, steaks, beef, buffalo, meats, and 
yeah, that stuff's super expensive. Beef is super expensive. Buffalo, all that stuff. But there is an affordable solution to the carnivore diet. There's other affordable sources of meats. For an example, Hamza heats a ton of eggs. Eggs are super, uh, benef super good source of meat that you can get for very cheap. Another one is chicken breast, also very cheap. Those are like the two main cheap ones. So let's say you can't even afford the eggs and chicken breast. There are other viable solutions. If you think about it, the main reason we're doing the carnivore diet is so we can maximize our brain power. And we just want to cut, cut out carbs mainly from our diet because that's what slows your brain down and gives you that brain fog. So if you switch to more of like a keto diet where we're just consuming like proteins and fats, then that can be viable. You can, what's it called? Fats contain a lot of calories if you're struggling to get calories. So another problem you're going to see with the carnivore diet is people who are trying to bulk, people who are very big on athleticism and sports. You know, you need carbohydrates. They're, to some extent, carbohydrates are good. If you're an athlete, they quickly break down in your system and give you fuel. If you're like running a marathon or something, and you're not going to have time to like refuel and digest the giant steak, carbohydrates can come in handy because they quickly break down and give you energy. So that's when they do come in handy. And that's the main drawback is if you're an athlete, you know, you just got to make that decision. 50% of your brain power. Imagine what you could do with that. Imagine how much more productivity you could get in your business and your whatever you're trying to work at. It just depends on our individual goals. Maybe some of us are more focused on athleticism, athleticism and others are more focused on growing a personal brand or making money. You have to make your own decision and that's what it comes down to. If you made it this far in the video, then you probably agree with what I talk about. And I, I want to give you an offer. I want to offer you to join my mentorship. It's a paid mentorship. I have a bunch of bonuses uh, for one-on-one -on -one coaching. I'm going to link that down in the description. It's in my Discord and inside of a Notion template where I show you and I'll see you guys in my next video.